welcome Dietmar Rothe to take the stand. And Dietmar is going to now delve a little bit into the heart, the meaning, the personal meanings of the teachings, many of which have been lost. Dietmar? Thank you, Bob. And I want to thank everybody here for being here. Spiritual wisdom and the responsibilities of life are not the most popular subjects. Nevertheless, they should be. And what I have to say to you today is perhaps the most important message you may hear in a lifetime. Now please know that this is the first time I will be speaking publicly on a non-scientific subject. The role of being a preacher is new to me. So bear with me and with my heavy German accent. I will speak slowly because every word is important. You may ask, what the hell does a scientist know about spiritual teachings? Let me just summarize my answer by saying that I have seen the light <laughs> and that I have accepted the presence of a spiritual realm underlying the physical world, a reality that rules all observable events. My own path from ignorance to awareness is detailed in a recently published book with the title In Search of Truth and Freedom. I will be glad to autograph copies of this book which will be on special sale after this talk. According to my viewpoint, which is in total alignment with the teachings in the TJ, TJ meaning Talmud of Imana, extraterrestrial beings have monitored and guided Earth humanity's evolution for millions of years. We need to get beyond discussing mysterious lights in the sky and arguing the pros and cons of UFO reality. Rather, we need to accept the alien presence and learn to deal with its philosophical impact and we need to extract meaning and value from this for our own spiritual growth. Only ignorant people with an impoverished consciousness will keep asking, is there intelligent life out there? <laughs> In truth, the entire universe is alive and intelligent because the infinitely intelligent creation spirit maintains everything that exists within its consciousness. The time will come when humankind must turn around and become reacquainted with the eternal values of life, TJ 3626. And brothers and sisters, this time is now. Emmanuel says in TJ 1044, truly I have not come to bring peace, but the sword of knowledge about the power of the spirit which dwells within humans. 
Every one of us has an immortal spirit, which is a fragment of the universal spirit of creation. And the power of this spirit is nothing less than life. The power of this spirit. But why does Emmanuel talk about the sword of knowledge? Because it cuts through the crap. <laughs> and it gets down to the everlasting values. It separates the wheat from the chaff. I will reveal some of this knowledge today, but remember, in the end, it is not knowledge, but wisdom that is important. The wisdom to apply this knowledge to your life and your spiritual growth. There is no I equal to wisdom, no darkness equal to ignorance, no power equal to the power of the spirit, and no terror equal to the poverty of consciousness, PJ 2627. Before delving deeper into the teachings of Emmanuel, let me warn you that the eternal truth as proclaimed by Emmanuel may be considered the ultimate heresy by those of you who adhere to carefully nurtured and manipulated religious doctrine. Let's see, do we have it? Slides? As a messenger of this heresy, you may view me as an instant enemy or your instant friend, depending where you are on your own path of evolution. I want you to get over these feelings right now so that you are open to what the TJ actually can teach you. So let me clear the stage. Emmanuel, who later became known as Jesus, is not God. And neither of the two created the universe. And many concepts in Judeo-Christian doctrine are incompatible with Emmanuel's teachings. That's why he was nailed to the cross. Foremost among these are the concepts of sin, heaven, and hell, along with the related ideas that a person has to be saved by divine grace to get to heaven. And then God, by means of the devil, will punish unrepentant souls in hell. Truly, you will not be punished by, for your error by the spirit of creation because creation is not vindictive. There are only two fundamental sins, ignorance and poverty of consciousness. And you have to find your own salvation through conscious effort by taking responsibility for your life. Q. 
Keep this in mind for the rest of my presentation. <coughs> Creation is a conscious living spirit that pervades and embraces every part of the cosmos. It is infinite because it creates all space. It is eternal because it creates time rather than being subject to time. It manifests in every star, in every galaxy, and in every subatomic particle. It is all powerful because it drives all processes throughout the universe. It is all-knowing because it is the source of all intelligence. It is alive because it is the sum total of all living things. It can appear in any form because it creates all forms. It rules the universe, including all conscious life, through its eternal laws. The cosmos contains all kinds of life forms, including gods, space-traveling species, and Earth humans. God is a human being, like all the celestial suns and the terrestrial humans, except that he is vastly greater in consciousness. TJ 440. Gods and their space traveling celestial suns have come here repeatedly in the past to colonize Earth and to accelerate Earth's human evolution. Most recently, 12 to 13,000 years ago. Behold, God and his followers came from the depths of space and created here a new race and home with the early women of Earth, TJ 188. Michelangelo's version of God and his followers creating Adam is mostly symbolic, but otherwise accurate, insofar that it depicts God and his celestial sons as fully human figures and arriving from the heavens. Two space-traveling humans can be found in the background of a painting of the crucifixion, painted in 1350 and kept in a monastery in Kosovo. Other space beings are shown in cave paintings and petroglyphs dated at 12,000 and 8,000 years ago. Their faces shone like the sun, and their eyes looked like burning torches. They inhabited an environment of their own because the air of this earthly world would have been fatal to them. TJ 424. The space beings depicted on a cave wall in northern Italy are in life-supporting spacesuits and carry some kind of instrument or weapon. The being in the petroglyph from the Sahara Desert is also in a spacesuit and disc-shaped craft can be seen in the background. We have no reason to doubt that the Stone Age artists 
encountered and depicted actual space aliens. By procreating new genetic variations of Earth's human species, the celestial sun enhanced our gene pool. Behold, humans begotten by the celestial sun were different in a unique way. Their bodies were white as snow and red as a rose blossom, and their eyes beautiful. The human lineages will now retain their inherited beauty and propagate it further. TJ 4:28. Heavenly genes are still evident in some of our more beautiful people. Now that I have your attention, <laughs> let me get to the more serious parts of the spiritual teachings. Humans throughout the universe are destined to evolve spiritually over many reincarnations. The Pleiaren teachers of Immanuel define seven levels of spiritual development. Level one is concerned with simple survival. Primitive thought patterns and speech develop. At level two, rational thought is cultivated. Societies are established. We have cultural activities and primitive science. Empires rise and vanish. At level three, the first expressions of wisdom lead to intelligent use of knowledge. Technology is used to enhance the enjoyment of human life. We also see the beginnings of space travel here. Earth's human intelligence and spiritual advancement cover a wide range within levels two and three. <coughs> At level four, humans are grasping the spiritual nature of reality and begin to utilize their spirit power. At level five, humans have learned to live in peace and harmony with the laws and directives of creation. They are able to distort time and space for intergalactic space travel. This is a level of Immanuel's Pleiaren teachers. God's come from advanced stages of this level. J-H-W-H, Ishwish, stands for king of wisdom. Such a god may be assigned to oversee human evolution on an entire planet. At level six, advanced spirit forms have developed enough wisdom and power to be able to evolve further without the need of a physical body. At level seven, spiritual beings have become perfect, ending their journey by merging with the spirit of creation. I will now discuss the laws and directives of creation which govern life and which allow individual spirits to evolve. The fundamental principles of the creational realm are shown here. <coughs> One, nothing exists 
and nothing happened outside of the consciousness of creation. And two, all of creation strives towards perfection. This is against the second law of thermodynamics. Please grasp these two principles. They are most significant since everything else follows logically from them. If you remember nothing else from my talk but these two principles, you will have planted the seed for spiritual understanding. Creation evolves over eons of time according to eternal principles and laws which I have attempted to condense into convenient sound bites here. After my own summaries, I will quote relevant verses directly from the teachings. We distinguish between laws of creation and directives of creation. The laws define the principles and forces governing the evolution of the universe. These creational forces which drive evolution are life, creativity, logic, love, and wisdom. The directives are guidelines for humans on their individual path of spiritual evolution. I will discuss the laws of creation first. The laws of creation are the blueprint of reality. They describe the way it is. The physical laws that our sciences are discovering, such as the laws of physics, chemistry, biogenetics, engineering, and so forth, form a subset of the spiritual laws of creation because spirit controls the material world. Matter is the physical manifestation of a spiritual idea. And since the creational laws are built on logic, the physical laws must also conform to logic. Our scientists are starting to uncover many of these physical laws, but are still a long way from understanding them. I will concentrate here on the spiritual aspects of the laws of creation. And so I have arbitrarily extracted the 12 most important aspects of creation from the teaching. <coughs> One, immutability. Creation and its laws are eternal and unchanging. You can rely on creation. Unlike our governments, it never changes the rules. But the laws of creation are the laws of life and the spirit. Therefore, they are eternal and constant. TJ 2343. Two, omnipresent. Creation is all and ever present. It brought forth all that exists out of itself. It is the source of all power and endows everything with spirit and life. Within itself, creation is pure spirit and therefore infinite power. 
because it is one within itself and nothing exists outside of it. PJ 21, 28. Omnipotence. Creation is omnipotent. In its creativity, love, logic, and wisdom, and in its spiritual power, creation stands immeasurably high above all individually existing life forms. Emmanuel preached powerfully, saying, Behold, creation stands above humanity, above God, and above everything. PJ 34, 1. For love, creation's love is unconditional. Truly I say to you, a love that is unlimited, constant, and unfailing is unconditional. And is a pure love in whose fire all that is impure and evil will burn. Such a love is creation's love. PJ 32, 39. Five, logic. Every effect has a cause. Every action has a consequence. When you violate the law of creation, you have to accept the consequences. If the universe did not function according to logic, our sciences would be useless because mathematical prediction would be impossible. Commandments and laws are valuable only when they are derived from wisdom and hence are logical. PJ 26:11. Mystery. Creation is infinitely mysterious. No person can ever know and understand the last secrets of creation by conjecture. Only when a spirit has become all wise through the experience of a millionfold existence and is ready to merge with creation Will the spirit know the last mysteries of creation? No one knows the secret of creation, not even one person, and therefore neither God nor his follower. PJ 11, 29. Life. The life force is the power of the spirit. Life is. It is everywhere because the spirit of creation is everywhere. There is no hidden meaning to life. Life is an opportunity for spiritual growth. We create the meaning by the way we conduct our lives. And the power of the creation of spirit within humans embodies life. PJ 10, 7. Creational evolution. Creation never stops creating in the process of perfecting itself. Since creation is spirit and thus lives, even it must forever perfect itself. PJ 34, 3. And, but since it is one within itself, 
it can perfect itself by way of its own creations through the generation of new spirit forms that dwell within humans, give them life, and evolve towards perfection through their learning. TJ 34, 4. Human evolution. A human spirit expands and flourishes by enriching itself with love, logic, and wisdom. It takes countless physical lifetimes for a spirit to become perfect, and so it must reincarnate countless times. The spirit of each person is created specifically for the task of perfecting itself and gaining wisdom, TJ 21, 25. This brings us to the subject of spiritual immortality and reincarnation. Once created, a human spirit is indestructible. That's good news, right? <laughs> the material life is limited, but the life of the spirit lasts forever. TJ 34, 22. A human spirit evolves through the experience gained in many lifetimes because the spirit can only learn through the experience of life in a physical body. Only through the circumstances of human life can humans develop and use their creational powers in consciousness and in spirit. TJ 32:25. Free will and destiny. Free will allows human to learn by trial, error, and correction. Note, we don't just learn by trial and error. We must recognize the error and make correction. Creation guides the human life experience by leading a person into situations from which he or she can learn a needed lesson. Psychologist Carl Jung called these situations synchronicities. You may be familiar with these. Thus, humans live with the mission of perfecting their spirits and obtaining insight and knowledge through mistakes <laughs> so that they may lead the lives for which they were destined. TJ 18.53 and thousands of lights will guide humans along their path, provided they observe and follow them. TJ 3231. And last but not least, the subject of justice. Justice follows logically from the laws of creation. But creation does not judge. If you jump off a cliff, gravity will most likely kill you. But there is no judgment involved. The consequences are automatic. When you needlessly harm another creature, you also harm your own spirit by retarding its development. The consequences are automatic. 
when one makes a mistake that serves the insight, knowledge, and progress of the spirit, there is no punishment, neither in this life nor in any subsequent life. TJ 1852. Through these laws and directives, which represent creation, humankind in its irrationality will bring cruel judgment upon itself. TJ 2547. Another bit of wisdom that is rooted in this law of creation is, as you sow, you will reap or in street language, what goes around comes around. We may consider this the inverse golden rule. As you treat others, so they will treat you. And this is the way it is. But what is our responsibility within the grand plan of creation. For this, creation has given us two specific directives. These are, one, seek wisdom and the creational realm, and two, honor creation above all. In common language, the first directive means take responsibility for your life and your spiritual evolution. Emmanuel replied, the highest directive in the law of creation is this. Achieve the wisdom of knowledge so that you may wisely follow the laws of creation. TJ 23:35. And first, humans shall tend to their own progress in consciousness and spirit so as to produce creational harmony within themselves. TJ 32:14. I have listed five action items under the first directive. One, perfect your spirit. Therefore, humans should try without ceasing to broaden and deepen their knowledge, love, truth, logic, true freedom, genuine peace, harmony and wisdom so that the spirit may be perfected and lifted up into its true home, becoming one with creation. TJ 36, 28. Two, attend to your spiritual needs first. First, seek the realm of your spirit and its knowledge, and then seek to comfort your body with food, drink, and clothing. TJ 6, 20, 52. And what would it profit them if they should gain the whole world, yet still damage their consciousness? TJ 1838. Three, learn through life's experiences. Helen Keller said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. And of course she was right. Seek new wisdom through new experiences. Humans gain experience in the use of their powers and capabilities only 
by trying daily to unlock them. PJ 3226. But if humans do not think and seek, they will not be able to attain wisdom and will remain fools. TJ 26.15. Note that Emmanuel was able to raise the dead and heal the terminally ill, but he was not able to cure the fools. <laughs> if you remain a fool, nobody can help you. <laughs> the next item, conquer fear and seek true freedom. Love cannot blossom in the presence of fear. Personal power cannot blossom in the presence of fear. Therefore, seek spiritual wisdom to banish ignorance and poverty of consciousness so that fear may be replaced with love and confidence. Free yourself from the enslaving power of false doctrines, evil passions, addictions, negative emotions, imagined needs and attachments. No greater darkness rules within humans than ignorance and lack of wisdom. TJ 3215. And greatness of personal victory requires uprooting and destroying all influences that oppose the creational force. TJ 3216. <coughs> and now the last item on the left, gain spiritual power through alignment. Develop spiritual power by aligning with creation. Create a will that is aligned with the will of creation. So you learn to control your destiny. When a person aligns everything into this unity, making everything into one, and then says to the mountain, move away, then it will move away. TJ 34, 49. And know this, whatever a person may wish to accomplish, they must always first create the will to do so, because this is a law of nature. Thus a person determines the course of his life, known as fate. TJ 21.17. The second directive of creation is honor creation above all. But the other directive equal to the first is this. You shall consider only creation as omnipotent, for it alone is constant in all things, and therein is timeless. TJ 2339. There are three related aspects of this directive. One, honor the spirit within. Love and honor the spirit within you and in others. My spirit, you exist within omnipotence. May your name be holy. TJ 6, 12. Two, Respect the web of life. Recognize that all life is interconnected and one in creation. Biologically 
and spiritually. Chief Seattle said it well. Man did not weave the web of life. He is merely a strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. Whatever human beings do, they shall do with the awareness of creation's presence. TJ 32, 12. And lastly, we have value spiritual wisdom. Because spiritual wisdom that recognizes the truth is the only true value in life. For truly I say to you, do not throw your spiritual treasure into the dirt and do not waste it on the unworthy because they will not thank you and will tear you apart for their understanding is small and their spirit is weak. TJ 710. This takes care of the laws and directives of creation. Now some of you will want to know what happened to the Ten Commandments that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai. The TJ acknowledges all of these commandments of God, albeit in modified form plus some additional ones. And here we are. <laughs> the commandments of God define what is right for human conduct in order to make society functional. The laws of God and those of the emperor are human laws and are intended to maintain law and order among the people. TJ 23:42. The commandments in the pink boxes are related to the original commandments in Exodus 20. The ones in the yellow boxes can also be found in one form or another in the New Testament. Numbers 5 and 6 in the white boxes are conspicuously absent in the biblical scriptures. We find this strange since the abuse of power and the greed for wealth are the primary obstacles that prevent our societies from achieving peace, harmony, and justice. Could it be that the ancient gods were still afflicted with such human attributes, such as lust for power, for control, and for possession, so they could not enforce laws against such behavior? I will quote from the TJ only where Emmanuel's teachings differ greatly from the commandments in the biblical scripture. Number one, but the highest commandment of the law of God is this, you shall honor God as the ruler of the three human lineages and obey his laws for he is their king of wisdom and a good and just counselor, TJ 23:36. Note there's nothing here about living in fear of the wrath of a jealous God. Number two in my list is the golden rule familiar from the New Testament. Everything that you wish people would do to you do likewise to them, TJ 716. Following the golden rule will come natural to you if you have learned to observe the second directive of creation, 
to love and honor the spirit within you and others. But note also the following passage from the teaching. Offer your love wherever it is warranted and punish wherever the laws of nature demand punishment. TJ 541. Regarding the commandment of thou shalt not kill, the TJ is also more specific. Guilty are all those who kill when not acting in self-defense. TJ 5.23. Regarding greed and abuse of power, we have Turn away from the evil of your false teaching, which you carry out with arrogance and with greed for power and fortune. TJ 3.12. The commandments about swearing and using God's name in vain is substituted by number eight, be honest and true. Let your word itself be true and do not swear by anything. However, I say to you that you shall not swear at all. Do not swear by the heavens because they are infinite and immeasurable. Neither swear by the earth because it is impermanent and so forth. TJ 5.34 Regarding number 10, the New Testament says, Judge not that ye not be judged. But Emmanuel's actual statement was, Judge not falsely, lest you be falsely judged. TJ 7.1. And one last comment about number 12, knowing your worth. Emmanuel says, it is unwise and foolish for people to let others consider them greater or smaller than they really are. TJ 24, 14. In other words, be neither arrogant nor meek, but act according to your level of spiritual wisdom. There's nothing in the TJ about the meek inheriting the earth. The earth is destined to be ruled by wisdom so that ignorance and poverty of consciousness will be banished and so that love, peace, and harmony can flourish. This may not happen in our lifetime, but eventually, wise people on earth will gain the upper hand. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for sharing uh, a bit of that uh, wisdom from the Talmud. Thank you. Yes, are there, uh, guys, how much time? We have five minutes? Okay, if there are any questions, uh, Deepmar will address questions for five minutes.